Okay, I'm going to try to explain a little bit about uh, an inverted L antenna. Uh, it's an extremely good 160 meter antenna. And some of the some of the background. First of all, what you're looking at right now is the current distribution on a half wave piece of wire, uh, such as a half wave dipole. Now, it doesn't matter whether the dipole is fed from the from the center, from the uh, from the end, or somewhere in between. The current distribution is going to is going to be the same. It's going to be a sinusoidal curve. The <clears throat> maximum current is going to be in the center of a dipole and basically the, the current at the end of a wire is always going to be zero. The current's going to travel out to the end of the wire and it's going to be reflected back. And when it's reflected back it's going to be exactly opposite in phase. So the current that reaches the end is going to be uh, canceled by the current that's being reflected from the end. So you'll always have a zero point of current at the end. <clears throat> as, you, as you come back from the end, the current's going to build up. The outgoing wave and the reflected wave are going to be always in phase at the center part of the antenna. So they're always going to add together. It's going and, and they'll never cancel. Uh, basically, uh, the impedance at the center point of a half wave piece of wire is going to be in the neighborhood of uh, 50 to 75 ohms. It's going to be a low impedance. <clears throat> at the end of the wire it's always going to be a high impedance. So we're going to go from like about a 25, 50, 75 ohm at the center. The, the, the impedance is going to increase as we go toward the end of the wire and it'll end up like maybe 2500 or so at the uh, uh, at the, the tip end. Now I say the current zero here is not exactly zero but it's so close to zero we call it zero. Uh, looking at the scale I put here I call this zero degrees the end of the antenna electrical degrees. If you come back from the end of the antenna, 90 electrical degrees, uh, you're at the, uh, the low impedance point or you're at the current peak. Same thing. <clears throat> come back about 45 degrees and the current's like about 70% of maximum. You come back 90 degrees, the current is 100% or maximum. Uh, and this, this, is, this is a sine wave curve. At the 112 degree point, that's 5 sixteenths of a wave, as you can see we're coming back down. So if the impedance was 50 here, as we're moving over here, the impedance is going up. Uh, 50, 75, 100, 200, 300, 2500. It, it increases as we go toward the end of the, of, of the wire. Now that's significant because <laughs> uh, the inverted L is not a quarter wave piece of wire. The inverted L is a 5 sixteenths piece of wire. Uh, and, and the next slide will kind of start to, to show why that's important. Let's look at a um, let's look at a vertical let's look at a vertical antenna. We have a, a piece of wire, a vertical, a vertical piece of wire. Now it's, it's essentially the same as uh, the horizontal wire. You've got a, the current starts at zero at the end and it increases to the uh, 90 degree or quarter wave point and then it starts decreasing again as it as the wire gets longer. So this is yeah, close to a half wave piece of wire and as you can see the impedance is high at the end, it's lowest tier, and then it gets higher this, at this point. Now, interesting thing happens with wire antennas that are shorter or longer than a quarter wave. At a quarter wave the X, the reactance, is zero. 
if the antenna was not a quarter wave long, it was short, the reactance, if it's a short antenna, is going to be capacitive. It'll have capacitive reactance. And you're going to want to tune it with a, with a loading coil. Like a, a short mobile antenna, typically you put a loading coil in it and uh, you're able to uh, 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 tune it to resonance. If it's a quarter wave, you don't have to tune it to resonance, it's already resonant. If it's longer than a quarter wave, the reactance is inductive. And the way you tune it to resonance when it has inductive reactance is you use a series, uh, a series capacitor. Now, I'm going to put in another little picture here. <coughs> this is the uh, this is the vertical antenna again, but the dotted lines indicate if it was straight. We bent it over, <coughs> but if it was straight, it would be zero at this point. And the current would increase to a maximum, and then it would start decreasing again. Uh, conversely, the impedance would be high. It would the impedance would go down to maybe uh, its lowest value. Then the impedance would start rising again. <coughs> now, <coughs> the current distribution is still going to be the same. It's in other words, I bent it over. The current's still going to be zero at the end, and it's going to start increasing. <clears throat> and then at the bend point, the current's just going to continue on following the sinusoidal curve. And it's going to kind of depend on how many electrical degrees or how, many, how long the antenna is in terms of wavelength. What we're trying to do is match an antenna to 50 ohm coax. That's the simplest thing to do. So what we found out is that if you make an antenna approximately 5 sixteenths of a wavelength long. Now remember, 4 sixteenths is a quarter wave. So you go longer than a quarter wave so that your, your, your quarter wave point is, is, is up here somewhere on the vertical section, not at the bottom. So the current is decreasing as we get closer to the feed point, which is at the ground. And the impedance is now going back up from, uh, from its low value, which was at the peak of the curve. So the impedance is going back up. Now, the feed point impedance of a dipole, a uh, dipole is a complete antenna, it's got two halves. And the, the impedance of a dipole is like about 50 to 75 ohms depending on how high it is above the ground. There's, there's a whole lot of factors here. So we're just going to say, yeah, the dipole impedance is about 50 ohms. Uh, at a certain height above the ground, it will be 50. Uh, if it's higher, it could go up to 75 and then come back down again. If it's lower than a certain height, uh, the impedance can be 25 ohms. So, you know, basically you can make a dipole anywhere from 25 to 75 ohms or 80 ohms depending on how high you put it above the ground. So, to keep it simple, we're just going to say the dipole is about a 50 ohm impedance at the center. Now, when you have a half of an antenna, such as the uh, a quarter, wave, uh, a quarter wave vertical, you find that the impedance of a quarter wave vertical at the base is not 50 ohms or anywhere near it. It's more like uh, 36, uh, 36 and a half, 37 ohms, something like that. So it's about half of what it would be if it was a, a complete antenna. So what we do is we make the uh, inverted L longer than a quarter wave. And if we make it longer than a quarter wave, that 36 ohms that we had at the center starts to increase again because the antenna is longer. So we can adjust it to approximately 5 sixteenths of a wavelength, uh, which would be 112 electrical degrees as opposed to 90 electrical degrees, and we'll get a 50 ohm point. But we're going to have inductive reactance because the antenna is long. And it won't, it won't match coax. The impedance will be a complex number, uh, 50 plus uh, whatever, X, whatever X of L is. 
and that's not a good match for coax. However, if we put a capacitor in series with the center conductor of the coax, we can adjust that variable capacitor to completely cancel the inductive reactance. Once we do that, we end up with a straight 50 ohm purely resistive load. And coax just loves a 50 ohm purely resistive load. So you can actually tune this thing to get a 1 to 1 SWR and you can tune it to any point you want in the band. If you want it to be at 1860, you can tune it to have the um, reactants cancel and be resonant at 1860. If you want it to be at 1805, you can do that. I've got a box in my yard with a variable capacitor. And if I want to operate on CW, I adjust the capacitor to a certain point. If I want to operate on a single sideband higher in the band, I just turn the capacitor about a quarter turn the other way. And I can change the resonant point, and hence I can change the um, minimum SWR point to completely satisfy my, my coax and transmitter. So basically, the inverted L is a longer than quarter wave of vertical, and because you can't Usually, you can't get something 130, 140 feet in the air uh, to support the top of this vertical or to an extremely tall tower, pole, whatever. I find that if you only go up about 50, 60, 70 feet, uh, 40 feet even, even 40 feet works. I've worked DX with 40 feet. So you get the vertical part as high as you can, and then you go over horizontal, and the horizontal part can be flat. It can go up, it can go down, it doesn't matter. There's not a whole lot of current on the tip end of this wire, so it's not radiating a whole lot. The bulky radiation is going to be where the, the current is maximum. So what we've got here is we've got a, a vertical that is 40, 50, 60, 70 foot high. And the horizontal piece is not necessarily a part of the vertical. It's, it's top loading. We call it top loading. And what it does is it gives you a, as much current as you can possibly get on the vertical part, which is the most radiation you can get for an antenna of that height. Uh, it works really good. In fact, it's comparable to, uh, it's probably comparable to a 160 meter dipole that's uh, 100 feet in the air. Maybe, maybe, maybe more. I, I mean, you've got to get a dipole really, really high to be able to have more radiation at a low angle for DX uh, than than just this low, uh, uh, low antenna, uh, low inverted L. I learned about this back in the uh, early '60s. Uh, there was a, a ham W1BB. He was called Mr. 160. He worked all sorts of DX on 160, and he was always on 160. Uh, and he, I've, uh, somewhere I've got a diagram that he sent me of this configuration and uh, a lot of people were using uh, the inverted L fitted with the series capacitor and it's an extremely good antenna. Um, now I'll try to elaborate on this uh, in, a, in another video but basically if this is 165 foot long about 160, 165, 170 foot piece of wire. Uh, you get it as the vertical as high as you can, and then the rest of the 165 foot just folds over. You can uh, trim it, give or take a few feet, to get it to the, as good as you can. And you can uh, cancel the inductive reactance with the variable. Now, the ground. I've had success with just a 8-foot ground rod. Uh, it tunes a little bit differently. The uh, real resistance isn't exactly the same, but it can be made to work with just a, just a ground rod. Uh, however, it's, it's much better, and, and most of the time uh, I always will add uh, a quarter wave radial. I'll start it with, uh, put a ground rod in, get the antenna up and working in tune and uh, okay it'll work then I, I'll add a radial 
and I'll have to readjust the capacitor. I'll add a second radial, and uh, you know, theoretically, the more radials, the better. But I have, uh, as a good example, I've worked over 600 contacts uh, in the 100 in the CQ and the AWRL 160 contest. I've worked over 600 contacts uh, on numerous times uh, with with only uh, one, two, or three radials. I'm not sure I've ever had more than three radials on my inverted L. And it, it's always been enough for a lot of contact. In fact, typically you can be heard better on 160 with this antenna than you can uh, than you can receive. The, the big deal on 160 is you've got to hear the signals. Uh, with this configuration, uh, they're going to hear me. Uh, even, with, uh, even with three radials, they're usually going to hear me. Uh, and in a contest, like I say, six or seven hundred contacts on 160 in a weekend uh, is really nothing to sneeze at. The, the, the antenna's quite good. And uh, now, you can do better. You know, you can put elaborate ground systems in there, and it will theoretically make it better. I don't know if you're going to notice it that much. Um, you can go taller with a vertical, and that's going to make it a little bit better. Uh, if you don't have to bend it over and can go straight up with your vertical, well, that's better. But if you're in a situation where you can't go 130, 140 feet with a, a vertical, then the inverted L is certainly uh, a good second choice. It's an extremely good second choice. Um, and I, I can't think of anything, um, I mean, a, a big vertical on 160. Uh, the only thing better than a single big vertical on 160 would be two single big verticals that are fed in phase. And the only thing better than that would be three big 130 foot verticals that are phased. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if you can't do that, this inverted out, that's your, that's your second choice. And that's an extremely good antenna. This is N4DJ.